Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're starting the book of Revelation on chapter 1, 9 through 11. This is a very interesting chapter due to the fact that John had a vision of the Son of Man. And it says, I, John, your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and patience in Jesus, was on the island called Pasmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Tytera, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Now, before we get to the analysis of this scripture on Revelation 1, 9 through 11, and get into the facts, we have to understand that Revelation is divided into three parts. The first part, things you've seen, which you see in Revelation 1, 9 through 20. The second part, the things that are, Revelation 2 and 3, and the third part, the things that should be hereafter, Revelation 4 to chapter 22. So again, let me repeat this. This is very important for us to understand. Revelation is divided into three parts. The first part, things you see, which you see it in Revelation 1, 9 through 20. The second part is the things that are, which is Revelation 2, chapter 2 and 3. And the third part is the things that should be hereafter, which is in chapter 4 through chapter 22. The first part revolves around John's vision on the island of Pasmos. The portion of our study is the first section of this part. We might call it the circumstances of the visions. Several things are worth taking into account within this verse. We see that the person who received the vision identified himself as John. This is the Apostle John, as already mentioned previously. The same who wrote the gospel that bears his name and the three letters that also bear his name. This John is the simple and humble fisherman, son of Zebedee and brother of James. His life took a 180 degree turn when he met Jesus. John is the beloved disciple who had the privilege to sit down on the side of Jesus at the Last Supper. Now, when he received the vision, he was already an old man must have had more than 90 years. But note the humility of, of this great man. He does not put himself a big title of apostle, or he shares that out either, but chooses to describe himself in a simple but beautiful way. The greatness of character do not give titles to be acquired, but the actions are performed. Brother is the most sublime epithet that a believer can be prefixed to his name. The great apostle John preferred to simply call brother. Also, John testified that other believers is a partner in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. John had received a dose of trouble in the work of the Lord and was a partner of all those who are afflicted in the Lord's work. But John was also part of the great kingdom of the Lord and therefore was a partner of all those who are also part of that kingdom. Also, John longed to see his beloved Jesus Christ and therefore is a partner of all those who patiently await the coming of our Savior. Then John gives us a detailed report of a situation when he received the vision. He says he was on the island called Pasmos. Pasmos Island was not an island that someone will go willingly. It was a barren island, volcanic, rocky, with little vegetation. A bleak about 24 kilometers from Ephesus on the Aegean Sea measures just 15 kilometers long and 10 kilometers wide. On this island, a prison for dangerous criminals was established. It was equivalent to being in Siberia in winter. They were the galleys where prisoners were worked to exhaustion without the least convenience. The power was scarce. Inmates dressed in rags. Many of them had to sleep in damp, dark caverns. Some of the prisoners were so dangerous that it was better to be as far from them. Loneliness was the best companion. John, of 90 years old, 
more or less at this time came to this place. Why? The text says that he was by the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. John came to the island as a result of persecution by reason only follow and serve Jesus Christ. Tradition has it that the Roman emperor Dominician took the Feroscus, Feroscus prisoner, John, and to end his life, he ordered to be thrown into boiling oil. However, John did not die. In a miraculous way, his life was preserved. Dominician was so frightened by this fact, did not dare to try to kill him again. But he banished the barren island of Pasmos. In this deserted island surrounded by many dangers, John could have complained against God. Maybe John could have said to Jesus, I followed you and I have served all my life until old age. And now that I am old, why are you treating me so? Or maybe John could have said to Jesus, I'm too old. It's time to give me some comfort in my old age. But John does not think so and prayed. John knew that follow and serve Jesus has its price. That price is persecution or misunderstanding or opposition. And John was always willing to pay. Follow and serve Jesus does not guarantee that we will live comfortably in this world. Now, Revelation 1, 10 to 11, he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Tytera, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. When John says he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, does not mean that John was filled with the Holy Spirit in a Sunday on a Sunday service. On the island of Pasmos, because there was no church other than John had not believers. In addition, John was filled with the Holy Spirit also from Monday through Saturday, not only on Sundays. What John says is that by the power of the Holy Spirit was supernaturally transported when he received the revelation of Jesus Christ to be recorded in a book. When John says that was the Lord's day, it means that the events that were seen are related to what the Bible calls the Lord's day which is something different from Sunday. On Sunday in the Bible, it's known as the first day of the week. According to the Roman Bible, the Lord's Day means the period of time in which God will pour out His judgment on the unbelieving world and impose their sovereign government. Seen this way, the day of the Lord extends from the beginning of the tribulation and ending with the great white throne judgment, including the second coming of Christ and the Millennium Kingdom. If some of these terms are a bit dark for you, do not worry as we proceed with the study of Revelation will become clearly. The first experience of John in the Spirit on the Lord's day is heard behind him a loud voice like a trumpet. This means it was a clear and an intangible sound. You could understand perfectly. The message echoed in the ears of John. It read, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. This is how Jesus described himself. He is the eternal God and preeminent. Then John was ordered by Jesus Christ to ride on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches in Asia. What John was about to receive is the book of Revelation. Now John knew he had to record everything that was to be seen in a book, which should be sent to seven churches in what is now Asia Minor. Of these churches discussed in detail later in our study, while John is about to turn around to see with his eyes who was talking behind him. He was probably thinking how lucky I am to receive this heavenly glory. It is the reward for my suffering. The road to exaltation always paved with suffering. May God give you discernment. May God give you wisdom and understanding of this word. Because from now on, we will start studying the seven messages to the seven churches. May God bless you.